ಮಹನೀಯರೇ ಹಾಗೂ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರೇ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಈ ಸುಂದರ ಮುಂಜಾನೆಯ ಶುಭಾಶಯಗಳು ಅಕ್ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಅವರು ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಮಗನಾಗಿ ತುಂಬ ಭಾವನಾತ್ಮಕವಾಗಿ ಅದರ ವೈಭವವನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರೊಂದಿಗೆ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಂಡರು ಆ ವೈಭವದ ಹಿನ್ನೆಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡುವೆ ನಾನು ಧಾರವಾಡದ ಮಗಳು ಈಗ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಮಗಳಾಗಿ ತಮ್ಮ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ನನ್ನ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನು ಮಂಡಿಸಲು ಇಚ್ಛಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನೋಟೀಸ್ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ವೇರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಗ್ ಅಗಸರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ಹೌ ಎಮೋಷ್ನಲಿ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫೈಡ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದ ರಿಚ್ ಹೆರಿಟೇಜ್ ದ ರಿಚ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಲಿ ಎಂಜಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಗಾನ್ ದೇರ್ because i had an opportunity i had an invitation to visit or to go to kalburgi and build the central university of karnataka especially the department of economics in 2010 but we in karnataka feel that kalburgi kalyan karnataka no 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 we cannot go so that was the with that attitude i postponed my shift to kalburgi till 2012 but then when i shifted in 2012 i realized after some time had i not taken that opportunity i would have regretted in my life later because the best part of my life whether it is academics or personal is i am experiencing in kalburgi that is in kalyan karnataka so a kanakanadallu ಮಣ್ಣಿನ ಕಣಕಣದಲ್ಲೂ ಆ ವೈಭವ ಆ ರಿಚ್ನೆಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಕ್ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಸರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಎನಿವೇ ಸರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ Oh, sorry. What is it? Sir has already given Kalana Karnataka. It comprises of these regions. Earlier it was known as Hyderabad Karnataka, but in 2019 uh, it was renamed as Kalana Karnataka, comprising of these districts. And it was an administrative center of many dynasties like mauryas shatavahanas rashtrakutas kalacharis and many more and these dynasties as uh, it has been shown in the previous lecture built many architecturally rich monuments which explain our grand heritage and rich tradition and this is the land which gave birth to basavanna a uh, revolutionary in the uh, 12th century itself and we found that anubhava mantapa in the basava kalyana which is known as a spiritual parliament but before going in for what are the educational uh, policy priorities for this region i would like to throw light on the health of this region before we move forward i i have taken bellari bidar kalburgi koppal raichur yadar adgiri so this is the population which uh, is self explanatory and when we look at the density of population in kalyana karnataka region it is around 252 and uh, sex ratio it is much lower in many of the regions compared to the state which is 981 and uh, when we look at the literacy rate literacy rate also on an average in kalyana karnataka is around 52% compared to 65% in karnataka state and it is very lowest in yadgir district region uh, this is the total district 
gross domestic product in crores. So that is about Bidar, Bellari, the lowest is in Yadgiri district and uh, highest is in Bellari district as per the available uh, uh, information. And when we look at the contribution of this region to the different sectors of Karnataka, we see that the contribution of this region is very meager. The district contribution to the overall GDP of the state is from Bellary, it is highest, that is 3.4%, and the minimum is 0.8%, that is from Yadgiri district. And uh, the overall from Kalan Karnataka region is around 2%. Then when it comes to agriculture and allied sectors, the contribution is 3%, then manufacturing around 2%, and service sector around 2%. When we look at the contribution of uh, different sectors to the total district gross domestic product in the respective districts, we see that even today, uh, so though service sector contribution to the total uh, district GDP is increasing, but still agriculture plays a very important role. And uh, you can see that in uh, Yadgiri, it, uh, agriculture contribution is more. Even in Bellari, in most of the districts, agriculture is uh, playing an important role. And the manufacturing sector yet to play an important role. So this is the status of uh, different districts in Kalana Karnataka. When we look at the agriculture sector as a area, cropping pattern, as already pointed out, just I am substantiating uh, what has been pointed out by Professor Aksar with the facts and figures. And uh, net zone area is around 54% in Bellari, and uh, highest is in Kalburgi. In Kalana Karnataka, it comes to around 56% of the total geographical land is net soon. And uh, when we look at the cropping pattern, land under crop as a percentage of net soon area, we see that cereals, 50% of the total area in Ballari is under cereals, as well as the same figures in Raichur, then Yadgiri. And as uh, it has been stated, it is known as a pulse ball of Karnataka. So that is why pulses are rich varieties of pulses are grown in different districts of this region. And it is highest in Kalburgi, that is 58%. And then followed by Bidar, around 46% of the total cropping area is under pulses. And then even oil seeds are grown. And it is highest in Bidar followed by copper, around 20%. Then commercial crops are also picking up uh, later. So, and other crops like fruits and vegetables also, as uh, it has been pointed out, pomegranate and many other things. So they are, uh, that is also picking up in the region. So this is about agriculture profile. And uh, looking at the educational status, these are the, some of the institutions that we find in this region. So this, though these figures may not be up to date, but whatever figures I could collect, we see that we have many uh, horticul I mean, uh, Central University of Karnataka, Gulbarga University, there is a university in Raichur, Bellari, Triple IT, dental colleges are there, then uh, engineering colleges are there, technical college, polytechnic, all those things are there, but the number is uh, not uh, enough to cater to the needs of the region. And when we look at the gross enrollment ratio, we see that uh, KKR, Kalan Karnataka region, uh, percentage is 19% compared to the state, it is 34%. So again, uh, the gross enrollment ratio, it is interesting to observe that in some uh, districts, uh, the female gross enrollment ratio is higher than the male, right? But uh, overall, uh, the percentage is less than the state. Then enrollment details of SCST in higher education, when we look at it, 
the percentage share of KKR in the state is very meager. That is 3.75% in uh, 2019. Uh, that, uh, I mean, marginally increased to 3.94% in case, I mean, uh, sorry, it has increased to 5.15%. Uh, in case of ST, it is 5.15%. In case of SC, it is 3.75%. It is very low because uh, the population of uh, SC and ST is very more uh, high in Gulbarga region. Compared to the population, the uh, enrollment is very meager. And uh, female SC is around 2.9%. And uh, ST, uh, female ST enrollment is... 3.94 percent. So, uh, regarding foreign students, uh, we didn't find any uh, number during 2021. And when we look at the expenditure on education, at the state level I got, I, I didn't get at the Kalyana Karnataka, it has been showing, you know, the declining trend as a percentage of GDP, higher education. So th that is at the state level, then we can uh, draw inference what it could be at the KKR vision. Then uh, looking at the, this is about higher education. When we look at the school level, the details of schools, boys and girls. So that is around 20% of the total schools that we find in uh, KKR region, okay? And interestingly, uh, though in number, the girls' schools are less compared to boys, but as a percentage, it is more. Then details of students in uh, KKR region, uh, we see that almost the re re gross uh, boys and girls uh, students' uh, number it is higher for boys and little lower for girls, but as a percentage, it comes to around same as a percentage of the state, okay? So the total uh, uh, stu students in KKR in one to 10 standards, it comes to around 22%. Then looking at the details of the teachers, school teachers in this KKR region, we find that uh, male uh, as well as female, female teachers are less compared to male, che male teachers. And uh, as a percentage of uh, state, we see that uh, 16 to 17 percent are female compared to 23 percent. And uh, overall, it is around 19 percent of the teachers in the and teacher-student ratio, we see that it is almost one is to three. So every 30 students, there is one teacher, uh, which is a bit worrying. Then multidimensional po poverty in KKR, that is Niti Aayog has uh, done this uh, baseline report in 2021. And uh, from there, this is uh, very important. When we look at... Um, the people who are multidimensionally poor. When we look at the Kalyana Karnataka region, you see that Yadgiri tops among the Kalyana Karnataka districts, 48.37 headcount ratio. We have uh, in multidimensional property, uh, I mean, uh, index, two uh, concepts. One is headcount ratio, which talks about the proportion of population who are multidimensionally poor. Another one is intensity, which talks about the depth of poverty. That is, it talks about the degree of uh, uh, poverty among the poor. Okay, one is they are poor and how poor they are. That is another aspect. And when we look at how, uh, how many are poor, you see in uh, Yadgiri, uh, 40, nearly half of the population, nearly in Yadgiri, half of the population are multidimensionally poor. Means they are deprived of basic necessities, right? And uh, then you see Raichur, it is 40%. Then when we look at the intensity, again, it is Yadgiri, 
the these 50 percent of the people who are multi-dimensionally poor are deprived in around 50 percent of the weighted indicators that speaks about the severity of poverty among these people you just imagine not only that they are deprived of many of the basic needs even among that they are deprived of further deprivation that speaks about the acute poverty situation of the people in this region this is a very important point to be noted and uh, when we look at the rural and urban it is rural people who are suffering more compared to urban but interestingly as far as when it uh, look at the intensity even at the state level the intensity is uh, reasonably high but the proportion of people who are multidimensionally poor is in the state level rural it is around 19 percent and in urban it is around five percent but in kkr region in uh, rural it is 33 percent and in urban it is 13 percent almost double right and uh, at the district level, see, the intensity is almost uh, state level, it is 42.7, and uh, all the intensity levels are above 40. But uh, when we look at the ranks given by this Neeti Aayog report, Yadgir topped the list in terms of both headcount ratio and in intensity, in measuring the poverty, followed by Raichur in headcount ratio, then Koppal is third in the entire district. Uh, please note this. And then Bellari, fourth. And Kalburgi, sixth. Bidar, ninth in headcount ratio. When it comes to intensity, again it is Yadgiri, first, top the least in all the districts of Karnataka state, followed by Bellari, then Raichur, third, and Kalburgi, fourth. So, uh, what is this multi-dimensional poverty index? Why is it important to speak about in this context is you look at the three dimensions. Those have been considered in calculating this multi-dimensional poverty index. That is health, then second is education, and third is living standards. And here we are, have assembled here to speak about education. That in that context, I have taken this multidimensional poverty index. And uh, furthermore, it becomes very important because there is a lot of alignment of this multi, uh, different uh, indicators of multidimensional poverty index with the uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, you can see that the health Nutrition, it matches with the sustainable development goal. Two, that is, speaks about zero hunger. Then you come to the education, years of schooling, it uh, matches with sustainable development goal of quality education, which we have been repeatedly talking about. Then again, school attendance, it uh, talks about sustainable development goal of quality education. So, so many sustainable development goals are reflected in the multidimensional poverty index. So in that background, I thought it is very uh, essential to speak about. So education is one of the important indicators and it plays a very important role in uh, building a vibrant uh, community, you know, in enhancing the welfare of the people. So that is why <clears throat> this is the state of our Kalyana Karnataka. On one side, we have a rich heritage and culture, and these are the facts and figures throwing the light on the health, health of our region from where I come, okay? Then, now I speak about what are the potential industries. As already it has been said, in Bellari, we find that it is agro, agribusiness and food processing, textile, mining, and automobile, there are scopes. Then in Bidar, again it is agri, food processing, glass, ceramic textiles. Then in Kalburgi, cement, energy, engineering and automobile, again agri and food processing, textile. Then in Koppal, agri and food, tissue culture in banana, rice, technology. Then in Raichur, 
it is a green food steel mineral based textiles in yadgir it is agri and food processing sugar textile and natural resources this is the potential industries right then tourism already it has been said so we have ballari these are the places as far as tourist spots are very few in each and every village we find in kalyana karnataka the tourist spots right in kalburgi we have these many uh, as sir said uh, the first kannada literature kaviraja marga was written during rashtrakutas right and then we have uh, gangapur buddha vihar then in bidar we find gurudwar narasimha jarna vilaspur jungle resort and in yadgiri sleeping buddha a self manifested hill how many of you know that we have sleeping buddha in yadgiri one of the most backward region of our state then we have shorapur fort then mailapur temple vanadurga fort then in raichur we have saraswati math manvi and many other things and in koppal mahadeva temple pampa sarovar lake fort kanakagiri so so these are just to mention few and just to refresh these are the tourist spots give you a glimpse you know bidar gurudwar black buck resorts then we have akkanagamma cave see this could be a very attractive spur, uh, tourist spot now uh, for sharanas we have lot of so many things available but we don't know you know that uh, uh, he has made a sleeper out of his uh, skin that is there in uh, one of the villages in kalana karnataka and it has been uh, tested by the laboratory and they have uh, assured that they have made it uh, uh, clear that yes it is made out of human leather and it is kept there but how many of us know right then these are kalburgi some of the uh, tourist spots then we have koppala see stone rath mahadev temple now look at the architecture you know carvings so beautiful right but where are we we don't know and see this is raichur right mavina kere fort and then sri kshetra kurvapur right look at yadgiri one of the most backward district of our state in and also the most poverty stricken district of our kalyana karnataka we have bird sanctuary we have uh, chalukya temple look at that venugopal swami temple so beautiful and uh, sharwala right so these are the this one based on these facts and figures if we do the swak analysis strength weakness opportunities and challenges for this kalyana karnataka what i see this is my analysis strengths are rich in mineral resources rich in production of agricultural crops like gram tur sugarcane paddy sunflower pomegranate and many more things then weaknesses backwardness of the region acute poverty lack of uh, required industrial activities labor migration heavy dependence on agriculture and skill deficit opportunities agro based industries uh, the areas where we can uh, capitalize food processing industries poultry and animal husbandry handicrafts you know bidar is uh, very well known for bidri art you know where are we beautiful carvings now in central university of karnataka we are even in all the most of the kalana karnataka we are using that but how many of other uh, uh, regions know about it bidri art then we have a tourism sector to develop agri marketing sugar chemical and automobile industries threats are shortage of skill manpower lack of quality education lack of infrastructure facilities lack of diversification of industry and health sector so after giving you the brief background of our region what are the opportunities what are the threats what are the challenges 
you know, what are our strengths. So uh, can we have an action plan based on the whatever strengths we have, right? That, that is where we have to look for, right? Uh, one is policy priorities and all, but uh, we have to start now. We have to begin based on the NEP. It, uh, NEP has given us a beautiful roadmap. I haven't read such a beautiful uh, uh, document uh, that has been written, you know? Uh, I read it so many times and uh, so beautifully it talks about uh, that holistic approach for uh, education, you know? And uh, now, and it gives a lot of freedom and lot of scope. It doesn't say do this, 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 no. Lot of scope and freedom within our culture, within our heritage. It is we, we have to start now acting upon it. So action is required, right? And action has to start with us. Government cannot do everything, right? It has shown the path, now we have to move. So some of my um, suggestions, see, for any human being, when we speak about education and all, what is required is his basic needs to be met. The growth per se is not sufficient because growth is happening. Karnataka state, as a state, it is representing in various platforms with good ranking. But that, the whatever we are uh, earning through growth, those earnings are not percolating down to all the regions. And you know that Nanjundapa committee report submitted in 2002 and we are in 2022. Please let us introspect where are we standing today even after two decades. Uh, Nanjundapa committee, SDG, special development uh, plan, uh, SDP has been done, then uh, special status 371J has been given, now we have KK, RDB is there, special funds are going. So what is happening? Why even today the districts of our region are top the least? when it comes to poverty, when it comes to infrastructure. So why, what is happening? That is the question we need to pose now. Where are we, where, where things have gone wrong or where things we have to act upon. So I feel first of all, government has to give more funds to this region, right? Whatever the funds that, are be, that have been deployed now are not sufficient. We need to have more funds to pull the major uh, majority of the people from this poverty. Then only education has a meaning for them. Unless I am, my stomach is full, I have a roof to stay, and I have a decent clothes to wear, for me, without that, education doesn't have any meaning. So that is why we have to pull this region out of poverty through more resources to be provided by the government. That is my first suggestion. And once that is done, now what next, since we have assembled here to speak about education, so what I feel is for educational sector also, at the state level only, the resources are declining. So we need to have more educational institutions, more funds to be required for educational sector also, and quality. Quality education is a great challenge for Kalana Karnataka region. So we see that, uh, though we are talking about higher education, see, the input for higher education comes from uh, primary and secondary education. So the quality is uh, really a challenge in Kalana Karnataka region. Students uh, do not understand the basic concepts. Neither they write good Kannada nor they write good English. That is the situation. So we need to address this. But the NEP has given us a very good beginning. See, all these days, we as teachers also, uh, we used to create a kind of, you know, inferiority complex among the children saying that you can't speak English. Oh, if we cannot speak good English, I'm not good. It's a mass psych uh, psyche, you know? So we used to feel inferior, but we don't have to feel inferior anymore. Our mother tongue, our, uh, this one, Kannada, we can flourish in Kannada. You can learn any course in Kannada. Right? So first of all, what is required is to bring in the required change, I feel is that belongingness as suggested in NEP. We have to bring that belongingness, the proud of being, uh, you know, Indian and being Kalana Karnataka, 
student. So we should feel uh, proud of ourselves. When we start feeling proud of ourselves, and when we feel, yes, it is my region, it is my village, I belong to this, it is my language, then everything changes. Because the mental slavery that we have been going through all these days, now we have to break the shackles of that, right? No more. We are good, we are the best. What unfortunately the Britishers have done is, before leaving this country, uh, earlier we were physically the slaves to them, but they made us mental slaves. So that's the best strategy, you know. If you make them mental, mentally uh, dependent or slavery, then it runs into generations. They don't have to do. See, even after independence of 75 years or so, Amrit Mahotsav, still we haven't overcome that. English is superior. No. Their culture is superior. No. It is, we have to realize first, we are superior, our knowledge system is superior, our heritage. Let us feel that, you know, the belongingness. Then, uh, automatically what we feel, we feel happy, we feel proud, let us feel proud of ourselves. Then start bringing the changes. So my humble request to all my colleagues here, see, each one of you will be influencing hundreds and thousands of students in your concerned organization. So try to build this kind of uh, self-confidence, belongingness. It is nothing, we are not saying that we don't like English. We do. But first we should like our own home, you know, our country, our language, our mother. Then everything else. So if without that, others, we are nothing. So I request all of you to uh, take away the other, uh, I think yesterday we had an associate professor of practice asking, what is the takeaway, for, uh, take I mean, outcome of this conference? And I uh, feel, I mean, uh, I want to say that the outcome should be all of us, let us get ignited with that kind of patriotism, that kind of uh, belongingness. I am from Raichur, it is my home, you know. Though we are poor, but so much is there, rich culture, heritage. So with that feeling, if we go back and uh, give that, you know, vibrations to our students, even one teacher influencing 100 students, you see so many hundreds of teachers, uh, that is how the mass revolution should start. The beginning should happen with us. And we as teachers can influence the students very much. Students are very much influenced by teachers rather than their parents, right? So let us change our mindset. That should be the takeaway from this conference and ignite the young minds wherever we go, right? And in Kalyana Karnataka, I feel that we have a lot of things to do, right? So what I feel is Kalyana Karnataka, uh, development board should have a consortium of educational institutions, especially higher educations like Central University of Karnataka, Gulbarga University, they and other mini state universities should be involved in this process because we universities are functioning in silos. We don't feel our belongingness to the society where we are involved. So uh, focused uh, partnership should be the top priority of Kalyana Karnataka uh, Development Board. It has to take the initiative with, uh, then all the teachers of the region should get involved in evaluating the performance of the schools, colleges. So we should give a micro model of success stories. Niti Aayog is doing that now. The, at the district level, micro mo uh, models. So we have to develop the micro models. We have to develop the new programs in relating to agro processing, agribusiness, you know, where, and we need to develop tourism so that if we involve the regional uh, youth uh, uh, in all these uh, potential areas, then we can stop the migration through migration, if we stop that, then we will stop the uh, urban urbanization where there is a lot of, again, slum growth and poverty, all these things. So th on these lines, we have to work. And these should be, I feel, the policy priorities for uh, Kalyana Karnataka region. And I feel uh, KKRDB, sir, it has to involve us because in uh, Central University of Karnataka, we have a rich human resource available. So if it is of no use for that region, then it doesn't serve the purpose. So sir can pass the message to KKRDB 
uh, in his capacity. So with these uh, few words, I thank the organizers, especially SES and uh, CMDR for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak some of my views on Kalana Karnataka. Thank you very much.